Kia ora Noam. Uh, welcome back and we are here for the um, next two or is it three presentations of the day. We will soon find out. Uh, I would like to just introduce the first one and then after that one I'll count the other the other two. It'll take me, I've got 20 minutes to do that so that's good. Um, Ian Beardsley. Um, Ian is the Catalyst Open Source Academy Coordinator at, and you're going to hear more today about what that means and what that is. Uh, Ian has been at Catalyst for just under 15 years, cursing at computers in different roles over that time. Although at times he regrets not having trained in professional macrame, he does usually enjoy working with people and computers. In his spare time, he likes hurting himself while not skiing, not getting hit by people, and alternating between watching the veggie garden grow and ripping the weeds that weren't actually veggies out. <laughs> Look forward to hearing your talk, Ian, and I'll hand over to him now. Thanks so much. So um, this will either be 11 slides done in 2 minutes and 36 seconds, or at about two o'clock on slide three, I'll be tied to, I'll be tied, told to quieten down. Um, so, I um, had wanted to do this a number of years, um, mainly because it would be nice to be able to go and do this in other places. Um, unfortunately, I'm here in Wellington, um, and most of the people that I'd like to have spoken to a little bit more in person aren't actually here, but. Um, I hope everyone is well. Um, it is works. Excellent. Um, so just to clarify some of the um, comments, um, I have been skiing. I quite enjoy skiing, but um, a couple of times in the car park afterwards and putting my ski boots on, I've managed to hurt myself relatively badly. One ended up in surgery. Um, as yet, I haven't hurt myself actually skiing. <laughs> Touch wood. Um, that picture is actually um, in Japan um, when um, we got back just before the COVID lockdown, which was handy. Um, up in the corner, um, the not, get, not getting hurt by people or not hitting people. Um, I do um, teach a martial arts club, um, and that's my belt, nice and old and tattered. Um, and I have a picture of my garden. I don't have many pictures in my slides because basically um, it's too hard to choose which ones. So Open Source Academy. Um, our Open Source Academy is a thing that we've done that is about teaching students open source development processes and roles. It is two weeks in January, mainly because in Wellington we have two full weeks that aren't caught by public holidays in school holiday time. We've been running it since 2011. We have each class, we have about 20 students. Um, depending on who you talk to is how many is our optimal number. Our first academy, we um, thought, well, our training room has 10, 10 laptops in it. So let's just aim for 10. We had 16 people. We thought, OK, let's bump that up a bit because, you know, we can probably do that. Um, the next one, we had 22. Uh, so we're sort of sitting around that 20, 20, 20 students mark. Um, it's a nice balance between being able to get people around and get people with a hands-on thing. Uh, we aim for the year 11 to 13 students. Um, we don't do university students because that's what university's for. Um, and the senior secondary school students are the ones that have probably done a little bit of di digital technology and will be in a position where they're going to be able to gain a little bit more from we what we can offer them. Um, some people have said, why don't you do code schools for primary schools? But yeah, it's, it's a little bit harder when you start talking to people that are substantially younger than you, or you don't have a lot of experience dealing with small things. <laughs> um, we have been lucky that um, 
one of the um, schools that has been involved is a girls' school. Um, so a lot of promotion, promotion by the Wellington East girls has meant that our class numbers have been 50-50 male-female. Um, it's probably fair to note that it's probably we should be thinking about our diversity rather than gender balance. Um, the academy started because we were looking at where our future employees would come from at Catalyst and also the realisation that technology, IT, seems to be pimply-faced male coming through. Um, so we want to be able to ensure that as we grow through, as we grow up, bring those students through. Um, digital technology is a diverse thing. If I look around this room, um, it's probably even 50-50 male, female, which is a good thing. Um, but also have to consider that, you know, librarians often tend to be female. The people in the back room doing the technology often depend, seem to be male, but we want to change that. So basically our two weeks is a tutorial week and a project week. Oh, yep, cool. I have a plan. I remember my plan. Look, there's a slide there that tells me what my plan is. Um, so we also run a Arduino Academy. So this is three, three days in the, July, in the July school holidays. We've been running it since 2013. Uh, once again, year 11 to 13 students. Um, eight of them, because that's how many we can stuff into our training room. It's three days, basically. We teach them basic electronics, uh, basic Arduino, and they have a project they work on. Um, sometimes that is just what can they do with all the components they've got. Um, sometimes we've been able to get them to follow along and actually work on a temperature sensor and being able to put it to a website. Excuse me. Yes, so, um, yeah, the Arduino Academy is something that has happened and we have quite enjoyed doing that as well. So, some statistics... Jeez. Some statistics. <laughs> Thank you, just laugh along. Um, we've had 190 students come through our Open Source Academy over the years. Um, we've been averaging about 20 per student... Per 20, 20 per academy... Um, 14 of those have had paid work at Catalyst. Um, they've all gone off to do other things. Um, five have had full-time roles. Um, just because they've had a full-time role doesn't mean they're still currently employed. We have three currently employed full-time at Catalyst. Um, and we have one doing part-time work. And sometimes, you know, part-time work um, at Catalyst will often lead into full-time work. Hey, Alicia. <laughs> um, so it's, it's, you know, it'd be nice to have to have more come through Catalyst, but people go off and do different things. Um, some students have gone off to work in the US at Salesforce, and we've had people, you know, Datacom and all sorts of other places um, that aren't Catalyst, but, you know, we can't all be perfect. <laughs> so our tutorial week. Um, it's, we use developing an application, a small application, to be able to teach the students about the development process and about using the tools. Um, we see those things on there. Um, you may guess that it's a lot to jam into a week. Um, and it is. It is a lot. That's why tutorial week is actually also Monday on the second week. Um, so students start off by installing Ubuntu onto their laptop, or our laptop that we're giving them to use for the week. We've had a number of students come through that already know about um, Linux, um, have played with servers and stuff like that. <coughs> it's important to note, I think, for us that we don't want students who know everything. Uh, we want to be able to develop those who have a keen interest, but not necessarily have the opportunity to be able to do, to learn about technology or, or do some of these things themselves. We have a server on our Catalyst cloud that they get to lock down um, and secure and then use for the, the, the ongoing course. Um, Freedom, um, I'm just talking about, that's Don, 
Christy, one of our, our managing director, does an excellent presentation. Um, if you've been at a previous Kohakon in Wellington, for example, you probably would have seen it. Um, he's probably got it on the web somewhere. Um, it's well worth watching. It's talking about why open source is important. And um, we also have a one have a presentation in with that section about not being a jerk. <laughs> knowing how to talk. <laughs> Knowing how to talk to people and work with people is an important part of most, most any job um, and understanding that where people are coming from, um, the, way they, the way they talk, the way they may write something um, doesn't necessarily mean they're a blithering idiot. Um, it often means that they actually have English as a second language um, or that they're shy or that they're overly exuberant. Um, how the web works, um, understanding why a computer talks or how a computer talks to the web is important. Understanding that, you know, when you're all the little ones and zeros as they disappearing across the ether are actually doing smart and intelligent things. So, and I'm just going to go to cross on to the next slide, next part of that, programming principles as well. Um, so, those parts are sort of some of the foundation of being able to start doing the work, understanding that, you know, how ifs and whiles work. Most students, as they come in through the academy now, know that, um, but often we find that some students don't have as much experience to go on as they can, as we, we would like them to be able to. So we have that in there to make sure we're building that foundation. Um, and then we get into, like, the user experience and requirements analysis. So people come into the Open Source Academy think, oh yes, I'm going to do lots of programming, I'm going to make all these fantastic games. And actually, um, sitting down and with a pen and paper or a whiteboard, uh, being able to work out what you're going to do and how you're going to get there is just as important than sitting down and banging away at a keyboard to make things happen. Understanding how the HTML, CSS and JavaScript worked um, We've got a full week. Um, in previous academies, we've been able to shuffle things around and had Julius along to be able to um, do some accessibility. Um, it's always hard to be able to work out how we can jam all the stuff in. Um, database work, PHP, Python, ReactJS, um, to be able to create a database for their application, have PHP to build a programmatically build the HTML and CSS, um, and then we have Python to create the API that talks to the database, and then the ReactJS then goes talks to that Python API. So we're using a whole bunch of things to be able to build into what we're doing with that, with that tutorial week. It is a lot. Um, Half-day sessions uh, where we're trying to teach several weeks of high school or university-level type PHP it's fun. Um, and I suppose the important thing to think about that, it's not one person standing up and telling people how to do stuff. Um, at Catalyst, one of the beautiful things about our Open Source Academy is we have people who are working with these tools all day, every day, usually. Um, and they're the people that are teaching the students or working with the students. We've got one person who's the key tutor and we've got two or three people running around the classroom helping the students with the problems. It's not a lecturer just talking at it, it is people helping people get the things done. Project week. So the project week, the Open Source Academy, the way I like to think it, the end goal is to be able to have a student get a patch or some sort of change done into a real open source project not a little make-believe project like we've done in our tutorial week, but be able to work with um, people around the world to be able to build or make some changes to a, an open source project. Some people have got been able to just get a small change into some documentation, but the process is similar to making a change to the code. You need to be able to talk to people, you need to be able to accept that maybe what you did wasn't quite right. You need to be able to accept that feedback. You need to be able to give feedback to other people as well. So previous projects we've used, um, Drupal, Mahara, Moodle, 
OpenStack, Pwik, which are now Matomo, um, and Silverstripe. Um, we've all had those projects being able to um, work with our students and get some, get some code into the upstream projects. It's always been impressive to see the different, our team and occasionally people from outside Catalyst give those students a hand. But why am I doing this here at Kōhākon? Well, Kōhā has, the project has been a fantastic thing, thing for our Open Source Academy. Um, it was there for the first year um, and all through the rest of the academies um, it has been part of what we're doing with our students. It has helped fantastically by the fact that we have a bunch of very keen developers at Catalyst working on the Koha project um, and the fact that the community itself it's, is a big community that does a lot of work helping people. Um, the first changes were a bunch of unit tests. Um, if we go back to... Can I go back? Yes. Uh, there's no Perl in there. The first couple ones we did Perl, but um, people said that was mean and nasty to school children. <laughs> Not the words, but let's just go with those. Um, so we've had 54 students through the academy uh, working on the Koha project. Um, hundreds of kittens have been saved. Um, Tosca's looking at quite well. <laughs> um, scoreboard.kohacommunity.org um, is a scoreboard of what the students have done. Um, feel free to have a look at it now while I'm talking. But basically it's a way of helping set goals um, so students know that they've been able to do what they've done, um, whether they've QA'd a patch, had a patch rejected, fixed a patch, um, yeah. Um, and you can find a little bit more about, um, so, sorry, the community, part of the community, think, reason I like this, it's, is the community um, has, the Catalyst Academy, they've selected bugs which are suitable for students to be able to work on. The fact that we have people in Germany or the US giving students feedback overnight once they've submitted patches or made some changes, tried to make some changes. That's, that's the beautiful thing about being able to work in Koha is that it's not just your local team, your local organisation. There's a big community that is very willing to help people achieve things. They want to achieve things because they're wanting to achieve things themselves, but helping people do that is a very, um, a very good thing. The future. We skipped 2020, the beginning of this year. It wasn't because of COVID. Um, it was basically um, workload was big and solid, um, and so by the time we started getting advertising underway for the recruitment, um, it was almost school holidays and then students were not overly focused. We ended up with eight applications, which um, wasn't quite enough to be able to make it go ahead. Speaking of applications, I think the biggest one we had, biggest year we had was 42 applications for the 20 people. Um, unfortunately, a bunch of those self-selected out by not replying to emails. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate. Anyway, so going ahead. Um, online learning, remote learning. Um, both of those are difficult. Um, as I mentioned before, one of the good things about our Open Source Academy is we have hands-on people helping people. Um, once we start trying to do that remotely, um, online, it becomes a little bit harder and will change the way change what makes the Open Source Academy as good as it is. But, you know, that doesn't say we can't do it. It'd just be a different way of doing it. Um, road trips. Had a little bit of a discussion while we're having morning tea. Um, there's no reason why I don't think we can be picking this up, the Academy up, and taking it to other places. We can take it to Marais around the country. We can take it to libraries. We can take it to just schools and out-of-the-way places. Although, of course, remembering that we are aiming for um, 
secondary school students, um, and often secondary school students do have, or secondary schools do have, some sort of digital technology. But also at the same time, we have to remember that often digital technology teachers are the maths teachers that have all of a sudden had to learn how to use computers. Um, we'd like to be able to think about how we can do a Raspberry Pi Academy. Sorry, just looking at my time to make sure I'm not going to go over too much. Um, and the idea of maybe how we could do a Koha Academy. Now this is where we maybe be able to look at how things can be done online. The idea of we have a, some structured learning that can take someone who is interested in learning about Koha development and teach them about how Linux works so they know how to run their server, teach them about Perl, teach them about the Python that's needed, teach them about accessibility and making sure that stuff's built into their code as they're doing their development. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the future. We've got so many things we could do um, that always it's always going to come down to you know time, effort, um, money, unfortunately. So yeah. Um, anyway, um, so that was my um, quick discussion about the Open Source Academy. Uh, what the? <laughs> sort of reminds me about when I sent my CV off. Um, I'd done it in Star Office, um, which at the time was the precursor to Open Office, which is the precursor to LibreOffice. Um, and I'd done it in that and then exported it as a PDF and sent it off. and. Um, the recruiter said, um, why did you send it like a ransom note? <laughs> all the fonts got all mangled up, and so, you know, it was like big fonts and little fonts, and it's like, oh. Anyway, um, so that should read ian at catalyst.net.nz for my email. Twitter account, iBeardsley, um, or Catalyst Academy. Um, the iBeardsley one is my personal one. You may get bits of garden, bits of weird ranting, talking about politics and horrible things like that. Um, we've got catalyst.net.nz catalyst slash academy um, and LinkedIn for me is um, LinkedIn I. Beardsley. Um, before I finish, I have one more thing. One of the things I had wanted, um, the reason I would have liked to have done this in other places and with more people around is I would like to have been able to thank a lot more people, personally, for what they've been able to do. So um, I'm sort of going to do this now. Um, we're going to do it in a non-physical way. Can I get everyone to stand up for me? Can I just get you to put your right arm up? And your left arm up? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Reach round. A little bit of a squeeze. And thank you very much for all the work you've done. <laughs> that is all. Thank you very much.